Yes. Good evening to everybody. Good evening, the whole world. Uh, I'm here to discuss a number of things today, but uh, I would like to discuss the causes of failure in animal farming. I want to generalize because most of the causes, most of the causes of uh, failure in farming, in animal farming, most of the time are the same. Believe me or not, you will witness me, you bear witness or not, it's one of the things. They are always actually the same. That's what I can assure you. <clears throat> so here, I'm here to discuss um, those that have done farming uh, and those that are willing or those that are planning to do goat farming. Uh, first and foremost, I will not say much because, you know, I'm also rushing. I want to go and sleep at least, you know, because me, most of my days I'm busy. And uh, it's only Saturday that I always pay a time to go live with you guys. We, we have uh, plenty of discussions. And uh, our discussion is going to be the causes of failure in animal farming. But as well, I will thank all of you guys who follow me, who follow my uh, project, who follow my YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and I think WhatsApp, some of you who are in my, vid, uh, in my WhatsApp groups. And I'll keep sharing with you the link for the WhatsApp groups because there you can directly be uh, updated on whatever I can do. Uh, first and foremost, I will uh, maybe give you a debrief again why I'm doing this. I've said this many times, but these are my reasons why I give people free information. Uh, my aim is to accumulate many animals in the country. And that is my dream. Actually, my dream, I want a census to happen in my country. Uh, not only my country, but also whole Africa or the whole world. But uh, the census I want to have in my country, at least we could have over 200, sorry, um, 200, no, 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 it's 20 million goats in my country, which are hybrids. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, but when we talk about goats, me, I always mention about hybrids. Why? Because I'm a poor man who needs money. Uh, reserving genes or like having local animals is a good idea. We really love it. It's a good one. But it needs somebody who is established and have money. You cannot tell me that Tamisi, I'm a fresh graduate and I want to start goat farming and I advise you that this is, you start with locals, uh, then you reserve genes. You know, when you look at the growth rate of that animal, also look at the investment, look at that would be uh, what will be your outturn mm -hmm. and when. Because in this farming, we are looking at time vis-a-vis -vis the muscle converted. You get. So my aim is uh, if we could accumulate um, 20 millions of goats hybrids, there I'm sure we can be able to supply any kind of market uh, in the world because we are many. I always say that don't centralize the business on you, more so the animal business, because the market can never be satisfied and has never been satisfied with what we produce because we always produce less and we need more. They need more. And they need in quantity. And many of you bear me a witness. Many of some people in the country here tried to grab contracts from different areas. Uh, but they really failed. Why? Because they were not established. They had no people to help them. 
You people, I teach you because I want you to help me. How? Because when you have animals, you are really a partner with me, directly or indirectly. Like it or not, we are sharing same uh, challenges. We are sharing same money or that's why i give you information i don't want you to lose and i want you to use your opportunity over that so that is my reason why i'm doing this i do this because i want to um assure you or i want to make sure that when we are many we are doing some good business together because when uh, a contract come here and let's say we are taking up, uh, let's say, 2,000 animals per week. It does not necessarily need me to sell all my animals I have when I don't even have uh, what to use that money for. But if you are there and you're really in need of money, I can let you sell more and then me, I sell less depending on the need that I want. So that is my, my plan. Uh, that's why I always teach you. And two... Uh, my dream is seeing all of you people, uh, farmers, uh, having animals and in big quantity, such that farmers no longer go to the market because farmers are market themselves. How? We can plan up and have um, an, a, moving, a moving abattoir. We get the license from the government. They allow us even the halal sorry, even the halal certificate. So when Hamis says, or oh, you know, Julius or, or 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 Ben, if he says that I'm selling my animals, somebody just drives a truck, mm -hmm. then comes to your door, to your farm. You show him what you want to dispose of, then they get those animals. They slaughter them, then after slaughtering them, they pack them, then they take the animals. When you have known actually how many kilos you have produced, because some of you people give out your animals and later you complain, uh, the guy cheated me, gave me very small money. But in that case, you'll be able to identify or to find yourself your way and know this is my capacity of feeding. This is what I've been able to produce. You get it? But if you don't do that, if, if, if we don't do that, people will continue cursing the, 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 the people who buys. But if our truck is there and the animals are slaughtered at our farms, farmers don't have, actually they have a bargaining power and say that our animals are supposed to be taken at this much. We might even decide to say that um, we as all of us, we have... Um, we have, uh, 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 let's say, same price. Let's say we are selling live weight and all our animals, we are selling live weight. Each animal we are selling it, sorry, each kilo we are selling it, maybe 8,000 or 10,000. And that's it. No farmer, no any farmer can be, you know, pressed because of that. Somebody brings his cooler at your farm when he is already aware of how much you are paying. You get. So um, that's just a debrief. That's why uh, why I'm trying to do this. This is a baseline, actually. Um, I'm starting to do it. I have started, actually, because now if I give you an update, I think we are now accumulating animals because some of my clients have 1,500. Others are now clocking to 2,000. Others have 100. But on average, at least every person is having over 100 plus animals. So, but we are still keeping on accumulating more and more the moment we shall we make more animals we are good to go we are really good to go but i'm telling you the truth we shall reach i want to reach a point when every farm of this country has an accommodation like let's say if somebody travels in and he really wants to learn there is no any reason why you only have to visit mm -hmm. and go away no come to the farm pay for accommodation and feeding then land you get you, you come comfortable because most of our farms are really far and you know the the roads the roads are really not good 
So if the roads are not good, that means coming, traveling to the farm and going back, it's hectic. It is exposing a lot of uh, 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 chances of getting accidents mm. because you, you know, you, you, you're driving so fast and you reach, you go back. Mm. But if you had accommodation, because most of the advanced countries or advanced farmers, they always have accommodation. For us, we don't mind about visiting your farm and we pay for accommodation and feeding. No. People, you know, people who are focused don't mind about that. So if all farms, we would make them serious farms. They have their offices, they have their accommodation, they have their chefs. That will really fetch a lot of money for us. You get? And that means if even those people who are taking our animals come to the farm, you know, slaughter from there, pack and take. When you already even know where your animals are going. But for us, we just always sell anyhow. So we need to make this a serious venture. That's why I'm struggling. And I'm not ready to give up. And I've already created more other people. And, you know, those people are also ready to create more other people over the same matter. <coughs> so, sorry. So now, I want, I want to go into this. The causes of failure of animal farming in the country. Causes of the failures of animal farmers. You get? One, we have, uh, there is something I've been talking about Three things, which are the pillars of a successful animal farm. You get? The pillars of a successful animal farmers, one of the pillars is uh, management. You write M plus N plus G equals to S. You know, M stands for management plus nutrition, which is N, plus genetics, which is G, equals to, suck to S, which is success in animal farming. But basically, one of the things that are really trying to uh, push us down is management. Because now many people have come up and started what they call genetical improvement. Many people have invested a lot of money in genetics, though they are still challenged somehow, somewhere. Uh, but we have tried our best. Two, we have pushed more of nutrition. We have pushed more of nutrition. Management has really become a very serious matter. Why? Because it is personal. It is human being. But this is a piece of my advice, you guys. Most of the failures, not this, most of the failures of animal farming is caused by families, relatives. I'm not saying that you people you shouldn't have to deal with your families. No. A family business is the most successful business. But it is the easiest business to break down. It is the business that can cause a lot of pain, a lot of confusion in your mind. Why? Because if you're working somewhere and uh, the people you work with are not your relatives, they make a mistake, you arrest all of them. But now if your relative, let's say your brother, makes a mistake in your business because you wanted him to, you know, to help, to be helped. If you arrest him and put him in because of the mistakes he did and made you lose money, that is going to become a family meeting issue. You're going, he's going to call your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister. Can you imagine her missus arresting me? So now, instead of being um um a uh, uh, business management issue it is now going to become a family management issue but these are two different entities one is family and another one is business so in the management 
my my issue is I, I would like you guys to deal with people that are unrelated someone who knows that his mistake is accountable for it do you get what i'm trying to say it's better you do your business and get the money the profits you get take it back to the family you know why because it's very bad for you to be rich and you're the only rich in the family because everybody will be running for you if you have a problem at home they will all run to you you know you will even hate what they call a family why because they don't have and you're the only one that has so if it's a business and your brother is also interested in the same business let him start a new project or your relative or your brother or your in-law let him start his own if he fails add him more money if he again fails add him more money but if you bring him for where to, to, to where you're getting the money from it's going to be trouble those are some of the issues me what i'm telling you guys these are practical things these are not theoretical stuff because i've moved to many farms many farms have really tried to uh, put them back into use and others have failed just because of that because now if if your family starts to attack me me i'm not um, your relative or something of course they have to go and i let you you know i let you handle because you will definitely fail but these are some of the things that have made you fail because of this management management with relatives most of those people who are not in the country those who are not in your country you know you're not in the country you have no time you don't have to go there to check but those who are in the country even if they deal with them they can easily identify the problem before even anything and then they stop it but those who are far away like abroad or outside of your country and you trust your your relative to do that kind of stuff most of the people really fail that's why i always say that deal with people that you can arrest uh in still in the management some people i don't know who told you them that uh divide and rule can do a uh, very good work in this kind of arrangement let me give you an example you people if you're a worker and you have your other work brother or you you work you work me you hate the person if you see a person making a mistake the, 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 your, your counterpart is making a mistake and you know is your rival will you really uh, tell him that don't do this mistake you're going to lose of course some of you will even drive yourself into the trouble you drive your rival into the trouble such that your boss can realize how stupid that person is how bad he is you're trying to you know enhance his mistakes you're trying to enhance his negatives you get it so in that process let's say let me give an example on the goats that a boss loves so much maybe he bought it let's say two thousand us dollars or three thousand and that goat you're seeing it's because it is in the flock of your brother or in the flock of your rival it is running into the ditch someone will not chase it he will not even say no he will let that person go into that trouble why because he wants you he wants his friend to go into that mistake so that you the boss can chase the person you, you, you get that um but where does the loss go okay for them they are fighting each other so that one can make a mistake but the end point is where it goes back to you so me i don't believe in divide and rule no i believe in people who are cooperative a guy told me about the the forces the forces one c stands for connection another c stands for coordination another c um, stands for cooperation and another c is communication and contacts you get it if you have no uh, contacts you cannot do communication 
if you if you're not coordinated you cannot do you cannot be cooperative and if you're not cooperative you can never do um you can never have connect connections so connection needs somebody who is cooperative connection needs someone who is uh connected someone who has contacts is the person who does communication so communication you communicate and get the feedback but if you only shout that is not communication so you the bosses whatever mistake that goes on ground in your farm it is your loss if you believe that you let me know don't create conditions that can make you lose money create conditions that can let you accumulate money how let me give you an example i have my flocks i think around eight of them on one farm and some flocks really hold pure animals and you know pure animals are around three millions ugandan shillings then that's around um i think it's around 800 us dollars of 900 but uh, some of my workers who are managing those flocks they don't even have a p7 certificate so someone is managing over my 900 million who is not even a graduate if i don't respect that person who is stupid the worker or me myself because some of you even people do your projects which are not even worth 30 million but every evening you want to go and do evaluation just imagine somebody leaving money with a person who doesn't even have a p7 certificate but that is a manager of over 900 million if you don't respect that person holding all that money you must be having a problem what am i trying to mean workers are human they understand sometimes they they think they get peace they get everything just imagine if you're also a worker and you're treated the way you're treating your workers hostility in farming does not work Family can accumulate a billion and more billions of money, but they can make you lose a lot of money because of just simple, simple mistakes. So one of the causes of failure in animal farming is management. Or the three C's. Or the, 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 the three pillars. You get it? Uh, and you know, the management mostly is one of the issues that is controlled by you the owner i want you people to understand me here very well selection of the workers you think when you do a farm you're supposed to put in relatives that one might not work and most of the people have really been successful because they have put in their their relatives you get it but it's not common. What makes somebody lose interest is a person handling issue of a farm and then somebody is transferring it into a, into a family issue. That is a very bad thing because you're not going to blame your worker because you know after blaming the worker, you're going to take that same issue in a family meeting and that will really destroy everybody. He will get out of that um let me tell you um uh, about management i want you to understand this i will not say that workers are good workers are not good let me say that if they are not good what do you have to do most of you are married people but very few have married their first cuts so that means they have gotten many people trying and fail. If a relationship fails, you try another one. It's the same thing like this. Transfer the same knowledge. 
that if I get this worker and it doesn't work well with me, then you can change and get another one, not until you get a person that is really very comfortable and cooperative with you, there you can be successful. You people, if you have very good management, let's say you have a very good manager, you, your actions are really good, your relationship is really good, you can handle human being like a human being, and you have no good feeds, you're going to fail. Because these animals really need to feed on grass such that they can convert the muscles. The moment you have very good nutrition, very good feeds, you know, have a good manager, but you're dealing with very poor genetics, you will again regret. You will again regret. So if you, if you have the three, you can never fail to do God farming. We all have challenges, like challenges of diseases, uh, we we don't mind about um, the challenge of the diseases. First of all, um, the challenge of the diseases, we don't mind about them because most of the diseases are vaccinatable diseases. You get it? Uh, let's uh, first put off the vaccinatable diseases. We handle them. We vaccinate all whatever we can. If you have a chance of having a vaccine for a certain disease, that is an advantage. Never allow that disease to attack you because you have a vaccine. But in the, if you have no vaccine for that disease, then find the preventive measures. Those, those would be challenges. But for the vaccinatable diseases, that shouldn't be our challenge. Don't give a chance. Don't give an opportunity for a disease to penetrate into your flow. So these three things of management, genetics, and feeding is really very important. Just take an example. The manager is good. The feeds are good. But you really have local animals. These local animals, I'm not saying they are bad. They are really very good animals. But they are time they take to give you results. That's what hurts me. So you will have good genetics, good management. But because in their nature... They can hardly convert a lot. That means still they are going to lag you behind. I like it or not, time will come when you can't really uh, wait for this long to maybe somebody paying you money in this kind of arrangement. So um, I go back to the causes of failure in animal farming. We talked about management. I have tried at least to take you through the process of management. The nutrition, you guys, you need to understand. You need to understand what an animal needs. For example, some of you people have square miles of land. And you think because you have a chunk of land, all the feeds that you have there are really nutritious. You make an animal go pick a certain grass, then it moves It moves three kilometers. If in that grass he picked, there is some energy, it's going to use it to walk. And if that animal is, a, is holding a baby, it is pregnant, mm -hmm. it's going to eat, what it has eaten is not highly nutritious, it got it from a distance, so it's going to use that energy to move back home, then find water. Remember, the baby inside also have to be served. It's supposed to be given food. It's supposed to be given on that thing that it ate. So finally, you find a goat that it is uh, eating, but it's moving long distances. The temperatures are high in some areas. Then it will come back and miscarriage. miscarriage. Do, do, do you get that kind of, of stuff? So, me as me. I look at nutrition as important. This is my take. If you have a square mile of land, this is the way you're going to utilize it. Get resignate at least 25% of your land. That is in Uganda. Because for your information in Uganda, our soils are full of legumes. Are full of legumes that even if you don't plant in some areas, 
you find that you have silver leaf you'll have this this modia you'll have chloris guyana you find bracaria molato unplanted in your area you'll find it but in some countries you need to plant it but if you have a square mile resignate 25 percent of that land but in the center of the land in the center why because in our areas people tend to steal grasses if you leave this area 25 percent untouchable you, you you face it off and you don't allow animals to come and feed from it then it's going to accumulate a lot of grass in the middle whereby your flocks are controlled if goats at camp a are driven to a certain angle avoiding them to come in the center then um, b and c also driven like that we shall only allow them in in um in a dry spell in a dry spell they should have eaten the whole of the surrounded area then in a dry spell that standing hay or that area of 25 percent resignated area it will have a lot of pastures what we call standing hay so you let the animals go in in the morning they feed because they are hungry they will utilize whatever grass they have then then um, the, 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 they will harvest during that early morning because everybody is really hungry. And then after that, they go to water, then they will start doing uh, defecation. So don't allow them to come back in. Let them go and feed from their area. So in the morning, you allow them to go in. This is a system which can work both on goats and cows. So if that is not the case and you know your area cannot produce such get at least the 25 percent fence it off then plant the grasses i've many times talked about alfalfa because it's among the best nutritious proteinous grasses then also talk of sugar graze bracaria molato talk about the smodium talk about of um, chloris guyana plant at least make sure that during the dry spell sorry the rainy season utilize that time harvest that grass make a hay burn or make silage burn so that in the period of the dry spell you're covered like me if i show you my silos i have you will not believe and even up to now i'm going to uh, i cut my grass yes last week and then this week it's ready. I'm going to harvest alfalfa and I'm going even to harvest sugar grass in the next two months. So I'm covering up myself for the dry spell. I will not have those matters or issues. You people, we might not have an opportunity of buying square mile of land. Most of the people of my age. But whatever small land you have, utilize it very, very well. So nutrition is a key point. Some of you people have miscarriages, get a lot of trouble with your animals, not because they are sick, but because they are poorly fed. And two, sometimes the board of an animal can show you that really I'm not okay. And it shows you the anemia, the stress. It can get an inflammation here, the jundis, showing you either parasites are killing it or the animal is stressed, is less nutrient. Uh, uh, is 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 is, uh, is less fed so it's anemic it has no blood so you have to find a way how you can help it by maybe providing good nutrition uh, providing with ferrum you know those kind of stuff so all that goes into uh feeding some of you people take the animals uh remember an animal where you got it from it has never eaten silage then you take it in your farm you put it on zero grazing it doesn't know what to eat and then you let it be there and you say my animals are deteriorating because you never taught it how to eat it i when you check in my video i taught you how to teach an animal to eat molars so whatever i put molars on an animal can ably eat it you get it so follow my videos really very well they'll give you very good hint and literature 
So I've talked about nutrition. I don't want you people to play with it. It is the key of everything. Then also think about of genetics. Genetics, we have tried to bring in genetics. We have tried all our best. Actually, availability of genetics is there. But you know, the two things, which are nutrition and management, is really challenging you. You guys, let me read uh, through your comments. And I think... Uh, um, uh, let me try to see your comments. I try to answer them, then I run away. Um, I can see a jogger, Farouk, CR7, size of land for 100 cattle feed lot. Uh, approximated uh, piece of land for 100 animals on the feed lot. Actually, let me check for you here because um, um, uh, 100 acres 100 ac sorry 100 mm -hmm. animals that means um, you need around how many acres because you need around uh, 10 acres around 10 acres can provide you with feeds which can feed around 100 animals if if your land is really very good because you need to have a lot of uh, water and you also have to have some good uh, grasses such that um, when you keep when you keep producing when you keep producing many animals sorry my many grasses you keep harvesting so you harvest the first lot and you harvest the second lot you know even you can fix in the third lot in the middle there uh, because our grasses to grow to the maximum it can do um, two months you harvest so if you're doing two months and you really have a system of irrigation every after two months let's say if you're getting around 15 tons time was uh, that is uh, how many times six that's a lot of pastures for the hundred animals so let's utilize this so i think you have uh, answered you um mozambique man takunda um all right also thank you for following um i can see dense sydney thank you thank you uh bgm bgm farming actually you guys uh these are uh, some new farmers that have really come up with also ideas of teaching people you also try to follow this BGM farmer. He's really a perfect guy. He's an amazing guy. He's passionate. Uh, he's really very passionate. And uh, he's willing to give out information to people. Actually, we have the same motive. Um, I can see, I can see Ernest. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nirenda, I'm really happy that you value what I'm giving you. Um, love from Nigeria, I really love you so mm -hmm. much. Um, Vic, you've not lost the important uh, lesson. Let's just be on. Um, many people I can see uh, from Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, yeah, Africa, even the family, yes, even the family can steal from you. I believe that. Um, uh, yeah, you come and visit me. Those who are willing to visit mm -hmm. me, please, you're free to to come and visit. Um, mm. Uh, Charles, yeah, I have never seen, 
unless the boy, the one, the boy that you call boas are really not good because this guy is saying he tried his locals to be bred with the boas and they again produced locals. No, 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 that's not possible for real. Maybe your animal was not functioning or else um, the, the one you call a boa was also um, just um, a low blood percentage boa. Um, Sorghum can't uh, poison the animals. Uh, if you really keep it well, storage is very, very important. If you don't sow it well, it can turn into uh, toxic. And also overfeeding it too much is also not good. So you need to maximize. You mix grasses with... Uh, um, uh, we mix grasses with uh, dry, dry grass. You get so... That is uh, how we do it. Me, what I do actually, I give my animals. I told you I have two ways of uh, storing my uh, alfalfa. I store it in a hay form, in the bells, and I also store it in uh, in uh, powder form. So, powder form is cheaper to store and it stores a lot. Hay is slightly expensive, and you know it needs a uh, a bigger storage. So that's how I uh, I store my stuff. But uh, I think tomorrow I will uh, try also to show you um, how um, I do it. I think you will try to understand it. I love you so much, you guys. And thank you for watching me. Just wish me a very good night. I think you pick something in it. And bye-bye uh, for now. Bye-bye, guys. Uh, thank you for the messages. I think I've been able to answer you, uh, most of you. I have answered you, and the rest you send in my WhatsApp. Yeah. All right, Kali Kali, let me wish you the best.